Romans chapter number 8, and let's look about verse 35. And this is probably not one of those Sunday morning messages, but this is what we got. And so Romans 8 and 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep before the slaughter. Nay, and all, th all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. And then he says all of those things, about 16 things. Okay, about 16 things he says, starting at verse 35. Tribulation, distress, persecution, so on and so forth. And then he gets all the way up to there, verse 39, nor depth, uh, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, that makes 17. So he says, if I haven't covered it yet, let me just throw in this last one and any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, if you didn't feel just a little spark of something when we read that, you might need a tune-up. You might need to check up. Because when you read something like that, all of these things cannot separate you from the love of God Oh, something inside of you ought to raise up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for allowing us to be here, all of these folks that are gathered. Lord, visitors everywhere. I don't even know half of the folks here, and I thank you for them for whatever reason they're come. Whether they're looking for a church, whether they're just visiting because they couldn't go to their church, or whatever the case might be, I thank you, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Now, the entire Bible is good. Would you all not agree with that? The entire Bible is good. But there are certain portions of Scripture that mean more to us than others, not discrediting any other the portions of Scripture. It's just certain Scriptures stand out to us. And Romans chapter 8 is one of those uh, chapters where it's filled with all kinds of good information. I've heard preaching on about my past, where I've been. I hear preaching on where I am going. But ladies and gentlemen, from where I've been and from where I'm going, there's a large space that I need to know what do I do now. I need to know, I know where I've been. Hallelujah, I ain't what I used to be. And I know where I'm going. Hallelujah to that. But there's a space that I'm living in. And sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes circumstances get on top of us. And we don't know what to do. David said, I looked to my right and I looked to my left. And no one cared for my soul. David got to that point. But here in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 tells us that we are the sons of God. And it tells us that we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us if you're saved. Now, let me say that again. You missed a good opportunity to throw a songbook or something or slap your neighbor. <laughs> well, it might keep them awake. You never know. But we are told in Romans 8 that we are the sons of God. We are told that we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. And that, they, that verse 1 says, there is na Therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And then verse 14 says, For as many of us as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Well, there's victory. You can find victory in chapter number 8. There's victory over carnality. There's victory over confusion. And there's victory over your circumstances. I was at a funeral not too long ago, and the, the dad of this young girl, I probably 17, 18 years old, he was a preacher. He preached his own daughter's funeral. 
How in the world do you do that? Well, I must say, my dad and I, we preached at my sister's funeral, and I thought that never could be possible. But you never know the grace that comes in just when you need it the most. And this young lady had been through all kinds of pain and all kinds of in and out of hospitals and, and circumstances beyond her control. It wasn't her fault. And she was sickly and she died at an early age. And her dad, preacher, walked up behind the pulpit, took her Bible, which I've done this quite often. I said, when you're preaching a funeral or something, I said, let me have their Bible. And you take their Bible of someone that's gone on and you thumb through it and you can see some of the highlighted stuff that they thought was important. And so the dad did that. The dad took his own daughter's Bible and went through there and read some of the highlights, some of the writing in the margin of what it really meant to her. You wouldn't believe some of the stuff she had been through. Sick, in and out of the hospitals. Now she's home, laid up, and at the point of death, and then she dies, and her dad says, yes, I will preach her funeral. He thumbs to the back of, the, of her Bible, and there's several different statements in the back of her Bible. And one of them said this, out of all that she's been through, one of the statements were this, stay with me and watch this. She made this statement. She said, circumstances are like mattresses. If you get under them, they'll smother you. But if you can ever get on top of it. Let me come over here to the Pentecostal side. Let me say that again because they missed a good opportunity over there. This, this girl said this, had it wrote in her Bible. And you have to understand, it's just not just anybody writing this in her Bible. This is somebody that had been through you know what on this earth? And she wrote this. She said, circumstances are like mattresses. If you get under it, it'll smother you. But if you can ever get on top of it, you can sleep real good. And so I got to thinking. I said, man, there's a sermon right there. I mean, you can pray. Here's the sermon. Circumstances. Frank, you ready? Don't be texting me, asking me what the title of the sermon. You need to listen, pay attention up there. <laughs> Wasn't that good? I'm joking. I'm joking. Circumstances. Are you smothered? Or are you sleeping? You're either under them or you're living on top of them, and the circumstances are still there. The problems are still there. They're not going to go away whether you're under them or whether you're on top of them, but it sure is a whole lot better to be on top of it than it is underneath because I'd rather be sleeping than I had smothered. And so here in Romans chapter number 8, it tells us and describes to us what this girl had been through, and it says... 17 different things from 35 to 39, 17, count them, 17. And do you know what the number 17 means in the Bible? It's the number of victory. How can you say victory in Jesus when you're going through the battle? How can you say victory in Jesus when you don't know where your next paycheck's coming from? Where do you say victory in Jesus when you don't know where your next meal's coming from? How do you say victory in Jesus when the walls are coming from? tumbling down on top of you. i tell you how. You get out from under and you get on top and you go to sleep in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this girl did. And ladies and gentlemen, hey, sometimes circumstances are bad. And circumstances come unexpected. Circumstances most of the time are unfair. You ever, been, you ever felt like you've been treated wrong? You ever felt like somebody's done something to you and this situation I'm in, it's not my fault, it's somebody else's fault and God, you don't care about me no more. You're not up there no more. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, hey, you're getting smothered. You about to smother. 
you better, you better get out from under that mattress and get on top of it. Amen. Now, I, look, y'all not going to believe what I, what I did to try to illustrate this message. We have a mission quarters up there, and there's a kid, kid's bed up there. I tried to get that mattress. I couldn't get that mattress. too heavy. <laughs> and it really would have illustrated the purpose because I'd have fell down on my, and I would have smothered. <laughs> and I said, we got a baby bed. It's got a mattress. I said, no, we don't have baby beds. I said, well, so I got a cushion off a couch <laughs> from upstairs. And most of the time, this is the way our circumstances are. They're on top of us, and we're trying to sleep, and we can't sleep, and we're covered, and we're covered about much serving, and we got circumstances that are unexpected, they're unfair, and they're not our, most of it's not our fault. Somebody else done something to us. Amen. Has this happened to anybody? Yeah. And you're about to smother to death. And what this girl says is these circumstances, they're not going to go away. But they can be livable. And so what he said or she said was, if you can get that thing out from under you, Some of you thought I couldn't do that. <laughs> That's a circumstance I just overcame. <laughs> there was a day if I ever got on the floor, I couldn't get up. <laughs> but now you got the picture. Now let me give you three things real quick. Three things. You might want to write them down real quick. How to get from under to on top. Number one, how do I get from underneath to own top. Well, <clears throat> what in the world? You'll find that in verse number 26. The first one. The first one's found in verse number 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, y'all see that, which cannot be uttered, and he that search, searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for us. Y'all see that? Now, I am not going to let the devil, this is a good sermon. This is a real good sermon, I think. And so, give me the, give me the Jimmy Swaggart mic. All right. <laughs> Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. So, when you're underneath and you're about to smother, what do you do? Well, when you're about to smother, Christians, you have a partner when you pray. You have a partner when you pray. And do you know who that partner is? The Bible says it is the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? Here comes pearl. Here comes distress. Here comes the sword. Here comes persecution. And all of that is under, uh, on top of you. And it's about to smother you. And then all of a sudden, you realize as a saved individual, you have a partner living on the inside of you. And that partner... You get down on this altar, wherever you're at, at home, wherever, and you get down there and say, Dear Lord, I'm about to smother to death. I don't know which way to go, and I can't get any help anywhere. I got circumstances that are not as unfair and it's not my fault, and I can't help it, and Lord, I wish you please. And there's somebody on the inside that says, I know what he's trying to say. Y'all ever got down to the altar and didn't know how to pray? And all you could say was, Oh God, Oh Lord, Jesus, Jesus. And if you're beside them and you hear them, you're saying, 
Man, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Man, if you can't pray no better than that, man. But hey, you ain't got to know how to say all, all the right words. You say, oh God, Lord Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit, he gets up under me and rises me above. And he says, won't you just lay down? I mean, why don't you just lay down and rest? Yeah. Hey, let me give you an illustration on that. Y'all remember Jesus sent the disciples into a ship. And, uh, and, there, and Jesus is in the bottom of the ship. Guess what? Asleep. He is in the bottom of the ship asleep. And it's a storm going on. Y'all fix to love this. The storm's going on. The storm don't wake up the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. The storm don't wake up the Lord. Amen. He's still asleep. Because he's on top of the circumstances. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, watch this. The only thing that wakes up the Lord is when one of his children say, Master. And he wakes up. He says, yes. Is there a problem? Lord, we're about to die. Hey, if y'all about to die, I'm about to die. And I'm God. I can't die. So why don't y'all get y'all a pillow and lay down beside me? Listen, if the Lord can sleep through your circumstances, then why don't you just lay down on top of them and say, well, ain't no sense in both of us worrying about it. God, I'll let you worry about it. I'm going to sleep. Now, this ain't that great of a Sunday morning message, but I guarantee you, everybody in this room, including me, can get some help out of it because everybody has circumstances. You have an intercessor. You got somebody that'll go between. You got somebody that'll help you. Listen, have you ever looked in your children and you're talking to your children and you grab them by the, like Mama did? She go, <laughs> and she pull you up real close. And, and, and you do your kids that way and you pull them up and say, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. And you try to explain something to them. You want to do this. And they got that deer in the headlight look. <laughs> now, some of y'all got it this morning. And you look at them, and, and, and you know they don't have a clue. They're not interested in what you're saying. But the Lord's not like that. When you holler for his name, you got his undivided attention. Because you have a partner when you pray. You have a partner when you pray. And you say, Lord, I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't know what to do. And I'm telling you, there's a partner on the inside that says, God, look. The Holy Spirit knows. Oh, watch this. Look, you, are you still in Romans? All right, look. Verse 27. Look at this. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth. So that means the Holy Spirit knows everything about you. Searches the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. That means he also knows everything about God. So, when you are praying, and you don't say the words right, and you don't, you ain't been to the cemetery, seminary, and you don't know how to say everything just exactly right, well, the Holy Spirit knows everything about you. And he knows your heart. And he knows what you really meant. And he knows everything about God. And so when you got a prayer, he knows the God that's got the answer. And so when you pray, the Holy Spirit runs up to the Heavenly Father and says, Hey, I know, let me, with groanings that cannot be uttered, 
that what he said? Lord, let me translate that for you. I know what he needs because I live in him. And boy, does he need help. I live on the inside of him. I know him better than he knows himself. But I know you, God. <laughs> We're actually kin to one another. And this is what he needs. If you'll send a truckload of grace, he needs it real, real bad. I know he didn't say it just right, and you couldn't understand what he's saying, but I'm just telling you, he needs a truckload of grace, and I'm his partner, and I'm his go-between. I'm his lawyer. I want to settle this thing out of court. God, can you help us? God says, I sure can. Amen. Circumstances, how to get from under, from smothering, on top sleeping. you got a partner when you pray. Y'all ready? Number two, you ready? <laughs> What T.D. Jakes said, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you got a partner when you pray. You got to hurry. Number two, you got a purpose when you're perplexed. Look at Romans 8, 28. And we know. What do we know? That all things. Y'all see that? Right. Does your Bible say all things? Yes. Well, all things means all things. That means if it was your fault or it wasn't your fault, or if it's fair or unfair, all things. All things means if you caused it, or all things means if somebody else caused it. Whatever you're going through, if it's your fault or if it wasn't your fault, all things work together for good. So you've got a partner when you pray, and then you have got a purpose when you're perplexed. You say, well, it just ain't fair. Well, it may not be fair, but I can tell you this. Hey, we have a purpose, and that purpose is when we're perplexed and we don't understand, God, I'm confused, and I don't know two plus two don't equal four anymore, and God, I need your help, and I'm under these circumstances. I'm about to, I'm about to smother. God says, all things work together for good to them that love God. You've got a purpose when you're perplexed, and you don't understand. You look at, hey, how many of y'all do the same thing? You look at the people, they ain't living for God. They're not in church this morning. They're not in church. You look at them, and they're prospering more than you are, and you're here every time my door's open. You tithe, and you do right, and you're trying to pay your bills and do right and have a good name in the community, and they're doing better than you are. And guess what? You're perplexed. You're like, well, how in the world is that happening? I'd be better off if I was out there with them. Oh, no. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them are called according to his, there's a word, purpose. You say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? How many of y'all in here like chocolate cake? Get your hand up. Quit lying. Get your hand up. How many of y'all know somebody that can make a tremendous Chocolate cake. Uh, Shelby, write this down. <laughs> Watch this. How many of y'all like two raw eggs? Just two raw eggs. How many of y'all like just take a handful of flour and just put it in your mouth? Let me show it like that. What about eating Crisco out of the bucket like an ice cream? Let me see. Y'all like it? Huh? I'm talking about Crisco. Just get down there like you would ice cream and do it. How many of y'all like that? Why? It's because sometimes in circumstances we take a bite too early and we take a bite of two raw eggs and we go, Oh, God, you're about to kill me. Then we take a bite of Crisco. Oh, God, you're about to kill me. Then you take a handful of flour and you're like, Oh, Lord, do you not like me no more? And God says, get somewhere, sit down, be still, get out from under your circumstances, get on top of it and rest and let me work all these ingredients together for your good. Ooh. Hey, it'll have to go through the fire. But oh, you just wait till it comes out of the fire and you put it like grandma did, put it up in the windowsill to cool. Whoo! And that aroma goes through all down in the valley. Right. Yeah. Boy, 
I'm feeling spiritual. I'm telling you, I got, I got some chocolate cake on my forehead one time. My, my tongue will slap my brains out trying to get to it. My stomach doing the hallelujah chorus. Hallelujah. <laughs> huh? But it wasn't that way on the first end of it. Why? Because all things work together for good to them who love God. Are you getting smothered under your circumstances? Well, get on top and rest. Hey, God's not mad at you. God's not upset at you. God knows exactly where you're at, and he knows exactly what you need and the ingredients you need and the ingredients you don't need. He'll try to pull stuff out of your life. Sometimes he pulls stuff out of your life to get it out of the way so it can be really good coming through the fire. Is anybody, am I in here by myself? Why? Because all things work together for good. Them love God. Let me give this illustration. You've got to hurry. Y'all have heard my illustrations. Most of my illustrations are, you know, whatever. But it's all I got. And them three boys couldn't they didn't have money to get in the circus. They had a, a wooden fence all the way down, real high, about seven foot high. All the way down, seven foot high. Wooden fence. And they was trying to peek. They couldn't see. They had them uh, overlapped. You know, you can't hardly see through there. They are trying to get a glimpse of the circus coming through town. So one old boy went down through there, and he found him a little knot hole. And he said, I'm going to watch the circus from here. Well, that other, there wasn't no room for but one eyeball there. And so this other boy, this other boy finds him a ladder, steals one out of the neighbor's backyard, and find, props it up against that fence and goes up there about seven foot, and he's watched it from there. And then one old boy couldn't get up on the ladder, wasn't no room for one. He found him an old oak tree. I'm just right by up there beside that fence. And he got way up in the top of that oak tree. And he said, Hey, y'all see them monkeys coming? <laughs> Boy said, I don't see no monkeys. <laughs> Elephants are passing me right now. Right. You don't see them monkeys? I don't see no monkeys. All I'm seeing is what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're in. Hey, guys, you ain't going to believe this. Man, this is fixing to get good. Well, I can't tell. I'm bored right now. Right. And I wish you'd hurry up and get good. All I'm seeing is some guy throwing up a, in some leotards, throwing up a baton in the air. Something that they shouldn't be so. Amen. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Every one of us in this room, including me, we're looking through a knot hole. And we see the right now. But there's a God in heaven that sees the beginning and the end and the middle and everything you're going through and he says hey it's physically good and you're like God I wish you'd hurry up I can't see nothing right now but if you know there's somebody telling you what's coming then you can rest I know he's telling me the truth it's been to get good here in a minute and the monkeys are coming <laughs> Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your husband. <laughs> hey, we got a purpose when we're perplexed. I got one more. You have a partner when you pray. You got a purpose when you're perplexed. And lastly, you have a power when you're persecuted. And you know what that power is? Look here. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. This last point is real short. It won't take no longer than 45 minutes. 17 things. Victory. Victory in Jesus. 17 things. Who shall separate us from the love of, God, uh, the love of Christ? Tribulation? No. Distress? No. Nope. Persecution? No. Nope. Famine? No. Nope. Nakedness? No. Nope. Pearl? No. Nope. Sword? No. Nope. And then he goes over here, verse 38. Uh, 
For I am persuaded, I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor if I left anything out, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, from the love of, Christ, of the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. All right, you ready? You got a power. You know what your power is? The power is when you're persecuted, no matter what I'm going through. You ready? No matter what you're going through, if you're saved, nothing can keep me from going to heaven. Old John R. Rice was preaching a tent meeting. The old man got mad because back, hey, back in the back in the tent revival days, them preachers wasn't sugarcoating preaching. They called it like it was, and people got mad about it. And old fella said, called his motel room up and said, Hey, Brother Rice, if you preach tonight, I'm gonna be in the audience and I'm gonna have a gun and I'm gonna kill you. Without missing a beat. You with me? Without missing a beat. He said, sir, are you really threatening me with heaven? You need to find something else to scare a Christian with. I ain't really wanting to die today, but if the Lord comes get me, hey, I got a partner when I pray. I got a purpose when I'm perplexed. And I got a power when I'm persecuted. And when your life is turned upside down, you're still in the hand of God. And there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Say, preacher, how can I get out from under? I'm about to smother. I'm about to smother. Peter said it this way. First Peter 5 says, it's what Peter said, and I'm done. Mark's coming to the piano. Peter said it this way. Laying all my care upon him. For he careth for you. And when you're underneath and you're about to smother, you say, God, I can't take this. God says, um, come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden, heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy, my burden's light. Jesus said, won't you just lay all of that on top of me. And then you get on there and you rest. Circumstances got you down. Your surroundings got you down. Don't know which way to go. Don't smother. Just rest and sleep. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning.